Chair Becca Finn, would you like to move to recommend that House File 922 be re referred to the State and Local Government Finance and Policy Committee? Uh, so moved, Mr. Chair. All right. Um, would you like to address? I see we have an A1 amendment. Would you like to address your amendment? Uh, yep, I would move the A1 amendment. It's just changing the word must to the uh, word may. So making something. Uh, any discussion to the amendment? I didn't think so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> seeing no further discussion to the amendment, Chair Bracker Finn renews the motion to adopt the A1 amendment. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Most prevails. Go ahead, uh, Chair Bracker Finn. Your bill is before the committee. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Frazier. So uh, if folks remember, uh, two years ago we passed a bill to uh, provide counsel to parents who are facing termination of their parental rights and child protection proceedings. This bill is kind of phase two of that effort. So um, that bill that we passed two years ago has now come into effect and parents now do have that right to counsel uh, in their child protection hearings. And this bill would set up uh, a statewide office of appellate counsel for parents so that uh, if they're in a situation where they need to appeal uh, the decision that was made at the district court level, they would have the assistance and support to do so. Obviously, uh, facing the loss of uh, your parental rights is a really big deal, and we want to make sure that um, parents are fully supported and um, have the legal counsel that they need uh, to uh, make their case uh, before the court. So uh, I could get, it, you know, we can get further into the details, but I do have some testifiers and want to make sure that uh, we have time to hear from them. But that's that's the short version of the bill. I will also, um, before the question is asked, we're sending it to state gov. Uh, they will send it back to us. Um, the idea with sending it to state gov is because we're setting up um, this separate office that's separate from the courts and directing the Department of Administration to help them uh, run that office that requires a stop in state government. So, Thank you. And I see you have two testifiers. Uh, would Brooke Baskow Warg please come up? Please introduce yourself and say your name correctly if I jacked it up. Uh, no. <laughs> Great. Good morning, everyone. My name is Brooke Beskow Warg. Um, I'm an attorney with Hennepin County Adult Representation Services, and I've represented parents on appeal at both the Minnesota Court of Appeals and at the Minnesota Supreme Court. Thank you all for considering this important bill. As you're probably aware, Minnesota's child protection system is plagued by disparities. Data from the Minnesota Department of Human Services shows that American Indian, Black, Hispanic, and children of two or more races are more likely to enter foster care and have their parents' rights terminated, and they're less likely than their white peers to be adopted. Additionally, most families who enter the system are living in poverty. Minnesota's appellate courts provide important oversight in termination of parental rights cases, which are considered to be the civil equivalent of the criminal death penalty, as they can result in the permanent severance of the parent and child relationship. Appellate courts ensure proper and fair application of laws and are courts with the power to remedy errors that may have resulted in an improper termination of parental rights. Appellate courts also provide vital future guidance for district courts and for attorney, attorneys practicing in this area to ensure that due process rights of all those involved in the proceedings are um, protected and that needless errors that harm Minnesota's families can be prevented in the future. Appeals and having an effective appellate system are effective tools for reducing disparities in Minnesota's child protection system. Um, as Chair Becker Finn noted, parents now have a statutory right to counsel on appeal. They also have a statutory right to appeal a final order in their case, including a termination of parental rights order. But the current lack of a central resource for appointing appellate attorneys means that some um, parents never have their right to an appeal vindicated. And this, of course, negatively impacts individual rights. It also affects the integrity of the entire system. Given the state's struggle with racial disparities, these negative impacts are too often felt more strongly by our communities of color and families living in poverty. 
It's for these reasons that Minnesota must establish an Office of Appellate Counsel and Training. This bill represents a critical step forward in improving outcomes for children and families involved in child protection um, proceedings in Minnesota. Thank you again for considering this bill um, and for your dedication to reducing disparities and ensuring due process for all individuals in child protection matters in Minnesota. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Warwick. Now we have Ann Carlson. Please introduce yourself and proceed with your testimony. Good morning. My name is Ann Morris Carlson, and I am uh, owner of Ann Morris Carlson or Ann M. Carlson Law Office. I have brought 39 appeals of child protection matters in the state of Minnesota. Uh, as recently as December 27th of 2022, I had to voluntarily dismiss an appeal based on lack of subject matter jurisdiction. The reason for that is that uh, after a 20 day window has closed, uh, appeals need to be dismissed because the Court of Appeals is not able to review them. And um, this has happened to me on three different occasions of appeals that I've been appointed. The, the way that I get appointed to appeals is that court administration will reach out to me in various counties. I've been appointed in 10 different counties, in, I believe, in the state of Minnesota. And um, there's a disconnect between the trial attorney and the appellate attorney where the trial attorney often does not want to take uh, the next step of the appeal and then court administration is tasked with finding an appellate attorney who is willing to finish the process for parents of uh, ensuring that their needs, <laughs> that ensuring that they get that right to review. Um, I'm in support of this bill based on the fact that I do believe that there are pro uh, struggles with um, parents having due process under the law and equal protection under the law uh, when appeals have to be dismissed based on the fact that there isn't a centralized process of identifying attorneys that are able to carry their cases to the final steps. Thank you, Ms. Carson. Thank you. Are there any public members that would like to testify to this bill? Seeing none, I will open it up to member discussion. Representative Niska. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative Beckerfin. Um, I appreciate where this bill is coming from. Um, definitely, this is an important place to have that due process is very important, and that includes rights to appeal um, when there's a meritorious appeal. Uh, my, I have a few questions about sort of the nuts and bolts of this, and I wanted to start with um, the path that this bill is on and sort of where this office is situated. My understanding is this is gonna be a, a judicial branch office. Is that right? Yes, but it won't be overseen by the court. Sorry, uh, it won't be overseen by the courts. The idea is that it would be a separate entity so that the courts wouldn't have a say because obviously um, the attorney would need to be separate and and um, you wouldn't have the, want the courts to have any say in how they represent their clients. Representative Niska. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, I appreciate that, Representative Beckerfin, and that was my understanding as well. Um, and so I just wanted, um, we don't have a fiscal note, we don't have an, an, an amount that we're, that this is gonna cost. Um, I'm hoping, I'm guessing that that means there will be a fiscal note at some point before it comes back to this committee. Is that, is that the expectation? Chair Beckerfin. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, and that, that's, that's why I explained at the beginning that it's coming back to us. Um, but we did want to make sure that we got this testimony in before deadline and that folks knew that this was coming. And um, part of it is changing the, the must to may changes some things uh, with the fiscal note. But uh, obviously, we have to know how much it costs before we can include it um, in an omnibus bill. Representative Niska. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and Representative Beckerfin. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure everyone kind of was on the same page about that. Um, uh, what is the best information we have about how many meritorious appeals? I, I just mean non-frivolous appeals, not necessarily that they're appeals that are going to win, but how many meritorious appeals are being missed right now because of, uh, you know, the 20-day jurisdictional deadline and, and cases falling between the gaps of lack of, um, you know, good appellate lawyers to be able to just issue spot and tell whether there's a good appeal. Do we have any um, good data about that? Chair Breckelfin. 
Uh, you know, unfortunately, we don't. You know, this this is a new that having the right uh, if you qualify financially to have an attorney. Um, this is a brand new thing, so there really isn't the data. I mean, part of the point of setting up this office is that then this office would have an idea because they would be getting those referrals and getting those asks, and they'd have a better idea. I think the problem right now is that if you cannot afford counsel for yourself, you probably don't. I, I there are. Parents right now probably don't even realize that the clock is ticking. So I think it'd be really hard to know um, because they haven't been vetted by attorneys, which is the whole point um, of the bill before us. Representative Miska. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I thank you for that. I, I appreciate, like I said, I appreciate the direction that this, this bill is going, and uh, we'll see if we can figure out some of those things when it comes back here. So thanks. Any further discussion? Say nine. Chair Becca Fang, please close. Uh, thank you very much, and I want to thank our testifiers and the work of the folks, um, some attorneys and other folks from, from Mitchell Hamlin who have really been leading the charge on this issue. Obviously, this is not a partisan issue. Uh, whether you have access to wealth or not should it not impact uh, whether you have access to justice, and this is just another uh, bill that points us in that direction. I appreciate members' support. Saying no further discussion, Chair Brackefin renews the motion to recommend that House File 922 as amended be re referred to the State and Local Government Finance and Policy Committee. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion prevails.